The following is a selected video from yourteacher.com where you can browse over 450 complete math lessons with example videos, interactive practice problems, self-tests, and more. Try a complete lesson today at yourteacher.com. In this example, we're given the function f of x equals x squared minus 4x minus 5 and we're asked to graph the function using its vertex and intercepts, write the equation of its axis of symmetry, and find its domain, range, and maximum or minimum value. To start this problem, remember from the functions chapter that f of x means the same thing as y, so we can rewrite our function as y equals x squared minus 4x minus 5. Now, notice that the problem is written in the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are integers. The value of a is 1, the value of b is negative 4, and the value of c is negative 5. To find the x-coordinate of the vertex, we use the formula negative b over 2a which in this case is negative times negative 4 over 2 times 1, or positive 4 over 2, which is 2. So the x-coordinate of the vertex is 2. Remember this formula to find the x-coordinate of the vertex, negative b over 2a. We'll be using it throughout this section. Next, to find the y-coordinate of the vertex, we simply plug the x-coordinate of the vertex into our equation for x, and we have 2 squared minus 4 times 2 minus 5, or 4 minus 8 minus 5, which simplifies to negative 9. So the vertex of the parabola is the point 2, negative 9. Next, to find the y-intercept, we can plug a 0 in for x, like we always do when finding a y-intercept, and we have 0 squared minus 4 times 0 minus 5, or 0 minus 0 minus 5, which is negative 5. So the y-intercept of our parabola is negative 5. Notice that this value, negative 5, is the same as the value of c. In fact, when a function is written in the form f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c, the y-intercept will always be equal to c. So throughout this section, we don't need to plug a 0 in for x to find the y-intercept. We can simply use the given value of c, which in this case is negative 5. To find the x-intercepts, we plug a 0 in for y, like we always do when finding x-intercepts, and we have 0 equals x squared minus 4x minus 5. To solve this equation for x, Notice that we can factor the right side as the product of two binomials. In the first position for each binomial, we put the factors of x squared, which are x and x. In the second position for each binomial, we use factors of negative 5 that add to negative 4, which are negative 5 and positive 1. So we have 0 equals x minus 5 times x plus 1. This means that either 0 equals x minus 5 or 0 equals x plus 1. And solving each equation from here, we find that 5 equals x or negative 1 equals x. So the x-intercepts of our parabola are 5 and negative 1. And now that we have our vertex and intercepts, we're ready to graph. The vertex is 2, negative 9, the y-intercept is negative 5, and the x-intercepts are 5 
and negative one. And connecting these points with a smooth curve, we have our parabola. One of the nice things about graphing parabolas is that if you have made a mistake with your vertex or intercepts, the parabola will not look right. So you should be able to recognize at this point in the problem if you have made any mistakes. If the parabola looks good, however, your vertex and intercept values are probably correct. So you have a built-in way of checking your work up to this point in the problem. Now, remember that we're also asked to write the equation of its axis of symmetry, which is the line that splits the parabola down the middle, as shown on the graph. And the equation for the axis of symmetry is always x equals the x-coordinate of the vertex. So here, since the x-coordinate of the vertex is 2, the equation of the axis of symmetry for this function is x equals 2. Next, we're asked to find the domain. Remember that the domain of a function is the set of all x values of the function. The x values on a coordinate system are the left and right values, and we can see that the parabola is expanding infinitely to the left and to the right. So the parabola will cover all x values on the graph which means that the domain of the function is all real numbers. Notice that we use a capital R symbol, like the one shown, to represent all real numbers. Next, we're asked to find the range. Remember that the range of a function is the set of all y values of the function. The y values on a coordinate system are the up and down values, and we can see that the parabola is expanding infinitely upward. But notice that it never goes below the y value of negative 9. So we say that the range of this function is y such that y is greater than or equal to negative 9. Finally, we're asked to find the maximum or minimum value of the function. Since this parabola is opening upward, the vertex is the lowest point on the parabola, so we say that the parabola has a minimum value at its vertex. To find the minimum value, we simply use the y-coordinate of the vertex, which is negative 9. So we say that this parabola has a minimum of negative 9.